lately. I can't get out of my mind how profoundly I think people are underestimating the energy transition that is underway. I think that the cost curves in solar and wind show no signs of really slowing down. There's obviously a raw materials inflation happening right now due to the global supply chains and war that are interrupting that cost curve for a year or two, but the fundamentals of the cost curve don't look like they're going to change for any reasonable period of time. And if that is true, then the power of wind and solar and other forms of renewable energy are being grossly underestimated in terms of what they're going to do to the input of everything energy goes into over the next few years. I think one consequence of that is that we are going to blow well past 100% of current electricity demand that will end up being supplied by wind and solar. I think that we're going to end up putting new sources of demand and load to accomplish new goals that have never been possible before or have not been possible through electricity. I think there's going to be a huge amount of software companies that are going to be enabled by that. I get relatively little deal flow on that area. And so I'm trying to drum up you know, more founders and entrepreneurs to come pitch me on this kind of stuff because I'm really interested. And so far, I've, I've seen, you know, a few like carbon accounting type of, you know, ESG reporting companies, and I've seen some battery management companies, but nothing that really gets my attention in a big way. And I think things are, are really, really moving in a way that is still consistently underestimated. For example, I'll give you one, one example of what I think is going to happen. I think we're going to end up running fossil fuel plants in reverse, basically. And instead of burning fossil fuels to generate workable energy in the form of electricity, we are going to use electricity to strip carbon out of the air to make uh, liquid fuels that are not fossil fuel and that don't have carbon in them. And there was no way the physics and the economics worked for that up until very recently with particular solar power getting as cheap as it is and that cost curve continuing to go. And now there's a bunch of companies that are pursuing low capex, high opex unit economic strategies that enable them to ride that cost curve down in a way that nobody had really conceived of before. This is going to change the world. It is going to be so big, it's hard to imagine all of the facets of it. Just because you kind of brought that up, how do you think about, you know, solar and wind alongside nuclear fission, are you spending any time kind of in those areas as well? Well, there's no question that there's a lot of advancements in nuclear happening right now. Small modular reactors, molten salt reactors uh, of all kinds are, uh, there's multiple startups doing that. There's multiple nuclear fusion startups out there, and there do appear to be substantial breakthroughs thanks to new advances in magnetic materials that can contain fusion plasma in a way never possible before. So it does appear that, you know, we might be close to first electrons for some systems like that sometime soon. The question is, are they going to ride a cost curve? In general, the technologies that ride cost curves are characterized by high capex, high R&D, low labor intensity. So it doesn't take a lot of people to make a, a piece of equipment and really high volumes of individual individual production units. And nuclear has never yet had those characteristics to it. It's labor intensive to build a nuclear plant. Um, there aren't a lot of them, so there isn't a huge amount of learning by doing. And it's not like there are there have been multiple generations that have actually been built. Now there's you know four or five or six advanced nuclear generation technologies on the drawing board that have been conceived, but they haven't really been built in the world. And that's the difference. That's what causes a cost curve is building high volumes of things with low labor and multiple generations of it. There are very few things that actually get on a cost curve. You know, automobiles do not go on a cost curve. They don't, you know, automobiles don't cost a hundred bucks today. The reason they don't is that while there's a lot of CapEx and R&D involved in them, there's also a lot of labor. 